North Face, fuck a mink North side, tuck your link Bitch, you better bring me a bottle Cause motherfucker drink Side quest, it's your boy the Zeppo. We at it again, you know what I'm saying? We're going to check out the 8-bit bros. We met them before, but we, we you know we come into their uh, their arena. And I don't I don't even know what the fuck. This place looks like a Trump rally, you know what I'm saying? Bye, bing. Gotta keep my voice down, I don't wanna get hung. Bing bing bong bong. KKK niggas in the back, no, I'm just playing. But on the real though, it looks like deliverance out here. Where are you going, city boy? I don't see one I don't see one black black person at all. I don't know if they have them out here. Anyway, we're about to do this thing. Side quest, your boy. Let's do it. One hand on the pad, other hand is on the bag. In the cap and neck jersey, I ain't standing for the flag. Might as well be the Confederate, the way they so devilish. Treat men in blue above. So we're just knocking around, you know what I'm saying? Traveling, moving around, and we found this gem. Look at this. Chris O'Donnell, Robin. Batman and Robin. You know, look at this. This shit is off the chain, man. Look at this guy. I didn't even know they made this. I don't even know why they made it, but it's dope. Word up. Wait a minute. That's not bad, man. What are you talking that's about? That's bad boy. <laughs> What's up? It's your boy Zeppo Side Quest. We out here with the 8-bit bros or one of the 8-bit bros. Bobby, how you doing, man? Good, man. Chilling, chilling. And uh, you know, today we just we just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? We just hanging out. We got a few questions. Uh, first question, uh, you know, in the reselling business of uh, you know, video games. Uh, what is it you look for? Like, what's the rare, you know, the perception of rare, like the gem? How do you decipher between the two? It's 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 a tough game you gotta play. It's kind of a balancing act because if a game is too expensive, it's a small market. There's there's guys who really want it. They'll they'll come after it, but you're dealing with a very small group of people who need that game, who want that game, who can afford that game. Um, there's games like on the Nintendo Stadium events. It's worth like 12 grand straight up just for the cartridge. You buy that game. I don't care if you pay five grand for it, ten grand for it. Yeah, you're not gonna have that many buyers. Yeah, um, you you gotta sort of keep your ear to the ground, figure out what people are looking for. Uh, Mid-range titles are always good. Mario's, Donkey Kong's, things like that. Things that are in this like thirty dollar to hundred dollar range mm -hmm. sell pretty quickly. Um, that's normally the stuff that I'll be looking for. Okay, you know, doing these deals, have you ever had any? You know, because you have to deal with people on the internet. That seems mad shady to me, you know? Have you ever, like, you know, had been catfished or had any kind of, like, shady situation where you had to bring, like, a weapon or something? I gonna do shit! Fuck up! Well, luckily the gaming community is pretty tight-knit, so a lot of people know each other. If I have to deal with somebody who's out of province or I don't know them, um, normally I'll touch base with a couple of my friends who are big-time collectors and see if somebody's dealt with them before. Um, locally, it's a whole different story. I mean, if somebody lives down the road from you or somebody lives in the same city, normally you can just, you know, catch them on Kijiji and say, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to come meet you. But it, there are those shady situations like... Uh, you have any examples? Yeah, there was this one time I went to meet this guy for a Nintendo in the box with a couple of games. He wanted me to meet him on the grimiest street in <laughs> Oshawa. And uh, basically after that happened, I was like, eh, okay, fine, yeah, okay, I'll meet you. About a half an hour later, he messaged me and says, okay, we got to change the location to some other really ghetto townhouse complex, which kind of freaked me out. Shady. And then I thought, you know, this is just getting weird. So we got the wife, we got in the car, but just to be secure and safe, I grabbed the machete. Put it, put it in the trunk, and uh, luckily the deal went okay, but I just figured, you know, if the guy tried to rob me, or if he did something stupid, I'd give him the stuff, do whatever, play nice, and then go get a machete and Jason his ass. Alright, so we just want to find out what the top three recent finds are. You know, the gems, the rubies, the, the pearls, you know, the emeralds. Well, can, you, uh, can you tell us uh, the top three that you found? Well, just recently we got Snow Bros. This is one of the greatest Capcom games for the NES. It's selling, based on condition, anywhere from 300 to 500 bucks. Um, great game, lots of replayability. Uh, you can play with two friends. Uh, it's it's just fun. You turn your enemies into snowballs and then chuck them at other enemies. Um, not a really long game, you could probably blow through the whole thing in an hour, but again, you can go back to it, play it again and again and again. Really good game. Um, after that, 
think we've got. This is very recent. I just picked this up this week. Gun Knack. It's a top-down shooter. Very bizarre. If you look closely, there's like carrots and your spaceship shooting stuff. It's very, very bizarre. Um, kind of reminds me of like uh, Raiden, uh, stuff like that. But uh, again, uh, pretty pricey game. It's running about 250 bucks right now. I got it from a close friend of mine out of his collection. Got a good price on it. Shout out Jay Robeck. And uh, yeah, really good one. Shout out to that. A no, big, big time pickup. This came in a few weeks ago. The holy grail of N64 stuff. The gold N64 limited edition from Toys R Us. Um, really sought after. These things are probably selling for a thousand bucks or more. Um, even the controllers alone, if you had one loose, are selling for 50, 60 bucks, maybe more. Um, it's a really, really great find. Paid up for it, but it's just worth it to have it. People come in, they drool over it. And, uh, you, know, some, <laughs> you know, somebody will be uh, trading or purchasing this. It'll be a good day when that happens for them. It's a big boy right there, man. You know, a lot of memories. Well, not not this one, but like with a 64, you know what I'm saying? Like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, which I think is in the back there somewhere. He's got everything here, man. But yeah, this is it's good stuff, man. Real good stuff. Thanks. All right, Bobby. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the interview. Oh, thanks for coming to see us. No problem. Where, uh, where can we find you? Like your information? Uh, we're on Facebook. You can look for us at Super 8 Bit Bros. Um, we're at the Curtis Flea Market here in Curtis, uh, just outside of Oshawa. We're here Saturday, Sunday, 9 o'clock until 4:30 every weekend. Cool. All right. And we'll be bringing new stuff in every week. There you go. Well, you guys have it. 8 Bit Bros. You know, side quest. It's your boy Zeppo. I'm signing out. And uh, you know, stay classy, San Diego. All right, peace. Thank you for watching the episode. Don't forget to subscribe. 8 Bit Bros. I'm getting my ass kicked. Peace. Okay, I didn't even throw a punch. Okay, wait. Ah, ah, son. How are you going to have a boxer against a guy who does kung fu? Okay.